My name's Jack Little, and if you remember Be There, Wow, and How About That, you'll know it's my voice. And I'm here for international wrestling, Australian international wrestling, and we sincerely hope that you enjoy. The one and only Jack Little, the doyen of wrestling. Well, it seems you've lapped up the first three volumes from the archives of Channel 9. Well, we found more, plenty more, in fact. Are you ready to rumble? We've got the beast waiting. Tojo, Killer Carl Cox, Waldo Von Erich, and Brooke Bernard, and a few good guys as well. <sighs> okay, first up, the tag team, the man who made that Japanese rack hold his very own, Tojo, with Waldo Von Erich against the Golden Greg Spiros Arion and Mark Lewis. Both wrestlers are now down on the mat, Great Tojo and Spiros Arion. It is from the referee is counting. Tojo's the first one to get up. He gets behind a Rion. Oh, and he's got that Japanese black business. This is hole. This is beyond human endurance. A real punishing hole it is. The Japanese black. And he tags his partner, Baldo Von Eric. Oh, it's a heavy hole, this one. The Japanese wreck. A Rion goes right down. Apparently it was not a tag. As Tojo goes in. A succession of blows to the head. Another tag. This time, we find Waldo Von Eric coming into the ring now. He's got hold of Arion. He goes ahead with the further punishment. A couple of blows with the glove. Spirit, Eddie Swan speaking, speaking to, uh, he appears to be uh, loading his glove somewhat. Eddie Swan checking it. Arion barely standing up, but he's on his feet as Waldo Von Erich comes in with that glove. Arion, how much more punishment can he take as Waldo Von Erich continues on with the punishment? Arion still on his feet, but how long can he stay on his feet as Waldo Von Erich comes in strong on him again? A tremendous amount of punishment has. The Golden Greek Spiros Arion taken in this passage of wrestling. Stumps there by Waldo Von Eric. And look at Mark Lowell appealing, appealing to Spiros Arion to get close to the hand for the tag. Can he make it? I don't know whether Spiros Arion can make the tag. Arion, can he make it? Lewin trying to get close, but Waldo Von Eric is keeping him away with further blows to the head. Arion goes to the ropes for a breather. There's a Waldo Von Eric. Oh! Big bad John interferes from outside. A bit more punishment. And now Arion might have the opportunity. The fans going wild here at Festival Hall. They really are going wild. And Lauren gets the tag. Lauren gets the tag. And boy, is he going. He's been waiting for this opportunity. As he goes in with about three or four blows to the head. Rolls him over, a beautiful drop kick, a drop kick, down goes Waldo Von Eric, who's in for the pin, oh, only the count of two, only the count of two interference there, so what happens, we find that Mark Lowen goes in, oh, and his one was caught between Waldo Von Eric and Big Bad Johnny goes down, can he get up, Mark Lowen comes in for the sleeper, Mark Lowen in on the sleeper hold now, He's coming right in on this sleeper, but oh, no! No, the wreck has been put on. The wreck by the great Tojo, and we find Big Bad John coming in to add to it, and Waldo Von Eric is there. Mark Lewin caught up in between the three of them at the moment, when it looked like he had the opportunity with that sleeper hold. Oh, my goodness. That, in, that Japanese wreck is well applied now. As Waldo Von Eric doubled up the body, but for a Rion, not to be denied, comes back. Oh, there's intensity in a Rion. You can see it right across his face. You really can. Oh, he goes at Big Bad John, but there goes. Oh, look at these tactics by Great Kojo. These tactics are something that are really are despicable. They really are. We find now punishment from all corners as a chair goes flying on the ring. Mark Lewis. He breaks the chair. The fans are standing up on the chairs. They're standing up on the floor. They're screaming. Lewin's going hard. And Lewin's going hard. He gives them the chair.
Bernard into the ropes and as he came off he hit him with an elbow and down went Brute Bernard. Cox on top and he covers him. One, two, but Cox lifted Bernard up. Cox could have got the three. Listen to the crowd here at Festival Hall as Cox grabs Bernard, picks him up and body slams him. Down goes Brute Bernard. Killer Carl Cox coming in with an elbow smash again as he drops down with an elbow right across the neck and throat. Fans going wild here at Festival Hall. Cox climbing up the ring onto the top rope and he dives, but Bernard has rolled out of the way. Bernard had rolled out of the way on the instruction of Bobby Shane. Cox is out after Shane. He follows him up the aisle. Brute Bernard is left in the ring and the referee has raised the hand of Brute Bernard because Killer Carl Cox jumped from the top rope. There's the bell. Cox coming back into the ring now. Brute Bernard is there, still recovering from a severe pounding he's taken from Cox. A kick to the midsection, another kick by Cox. He goes in after Bernard. He grabs Bernard, the brain buster. Up he goes, high in the air and rush down he came. And Brute Bernard doesn't know what land he's in. He's fallen through the ropes. He hasn't a clue where he is. Bernard has gone out. He's fallen out and staggered through the crowd. Cox is out after him now. Bernard has gone wild. He's pulling chairs around out in the bleachers and Cox is out after him. Trying to follow them through the thickness of the crowd on the far side. That's Bernard and Cox. Cox has caught up with him again on the far side and they're into it, hammer and tong. The ushers trying to break them up. Everyone trying to separate them. Cox is out after Bernard. Right to the top deck of Festival Hall goes Killer Carl Cox in hot pursuit of Brute Bernard as they go right to the top of the stadium here at Festival Hall. Crowd standing at their feet as you can hear the noise as up on the far bleachers, Bernard and Cox are fighting on through the bleachers. There's police and the ushers trying to separate them and the crowd standing right around ringside on every vantage point to see right up to the back of Festival Hall. Killer Carl Cox climbing to the top rope. Referee Mario, Tony Marino warning him. Cox that that is breaking the rules. He cannot come off the top rope and he comes down. A kick to the midsection by Cox. One of the head by Cox of Brute Bernard. Bernard swings wildly and misses. Cox again. Bernard dives in on top of him. Cox into the ropes goes Bernard. A backdrop. Over goes Bernard. Bernard Blay from an elbow smash and Cox went right through to the canvas with it. Killer Carl Cox and Brute Bernard. One to the head to go on with by Brute Bernard now. Bernard grabbing a handful of hair, taking Cox. Now he pushes him back on the ropes, coming off for the kick, and he hits him with a boot right to the side of head, covers him, Marino in one, two, only the count of two, Tony Marino, the referee. Outside the ring, and will only come in to count a fall. Into the ropes goes Cox again, and Bernard hits him with a boot. Bernard covers him, Marino in like a flash, one, two, and Cox, and Cox, has kicked out, but Brute Bernard landed right on top of the referee. Bernard's gone mad. He's looked at Tony Marino. He's got that look in his eye, and crash down goes Marino. Tony Marino, the referee, down. Cox stays on the far side of the ring, and Bernard has forgot all about Cox. He's going in after the referee, and this is why you can't get referees. He, they have no regard for them, and he's just pounded. 
Tony Marino into the far side of the ring. Now it's Cox and Bernard at it again. Cox on his knees, down goes Bernard. Tony Marino down, being dragged out of the ring. Now into the rope he goes and coming off Bernard, hit by an elbow smash and down goes Brute Bernard. Cox in again, fans urging for the brain buster. Cox looks up with delight, he does, he says right oh, here it comes and crash, down he goes with a brain buster to the applaudance of the crowd here at Festival Hall. Cox stopping in the midsection, referees out of the way, so Cox goes at it again, onto the top rope, onto the top rope as he dives down to the midsection and he covers Bernard, he covers Bernard but there's no referee then. Mario Milano seizing the position, comes in, one, two, three! Milano out of the crowd, he counts to three, he raises Killer Carl Cox's hand, look at Bernard, he's fallen through the rope, he's dazed, Bernard doesn't know where he is or what day it is, he's stranded between the ropes, Milano helping Killer Carl Cox, Bernard dazed, dazed on the other side, here's Cyclo Negro coming in from behind, with a knee right on the back of Milano. And now, Cyclo Negro, a free for all. Cyclo Negro, Mario Milano, Killer Carl Cox, Brute Bernard. And they're going hammer and tong, tooth and nail. Bernard goes out between the ropes. Negro, hit by a forearm jolt, he goes out between the ropes. Milano says to Killer Carl Cox, let's go after them. And you can hear the fans scream. Off into the night they go. Over chairs, tables, right across through the Festival Hall, hot in pursuit, Milano and Killer Carl Cox after Brute Bernard and Cyclone Negro, and they've left the stadium. I can't see them anywhere. Just beautiful to watch. Poetry in motion. Time for the Feathers to fly in this piece of vintage action from the late 60s on Channel 9. We've got George Barnes against Chief Billy White Wolf. Oh! Well, order's almost restored, but getting into the ring from Balmain in Sydney is up the Tigers, George Barnes. And coming in from Oklahoma at 18-4 is Chief Billy White Wolf. Referee calling them together and uh, quickly over to search Billy White Wolf. George Barnes. <laughs> Whoa! George Barnes straight into Billy Whitehall. Barnes uh, caused the action and then was sent round to the road from White Wolf. Back goes George Barnes into the corner as White Wolf comes in after him. as he started off to be because White Wolf there ready for him into the referee's hold. Oh, it's a standing Japanese wrist lock from George Barnes. Returned by White Wolf who also has a wrist lock now on Barnes and Barnes rips himself nicely and throws, takes down Billy White Wolf. Still retaining the wrist lock. That's a full Nelson from Barnes. And no, oh, no, 
nice go behind by White Wolf, who comes out with a flying mare on Barnes at Chinlock. knee lift from Barnes right into the side of the head of Billy White. Well, follows it up with one down the back and then comes over trying to suplex him but comes over with a hammerlock or half hammerlock trying to get that arm right up the middle of the back of uh, White Wolf. side headlock on Billy Whitewell. Side headlock. Barnes forced to his feet by Billy Whitewolf. Oh, Barnes goes there and takes down Billy Whitewolf. Barnes again. Barnes holding on like vice. The side of the pushed away by White Wolf. Over the shoulder. Barnes knocking. White Wolf the canvas over the top. It's White Wolf. Oh, picks up. And Black slams heavily George Barnes. Over the top he comes too. Pushed away by George Barnes. And they come again. It's a hip throw from Barnes. And over the top. Comes up. Lifts up. White Wolf. Comes down underneath with the elbow. Right to the stand. Pounds into the side of the head again. He picks up White Wolf. Slams White Wolf. Goes down after him. And then comes Barnes. Down comes Shoulder drop from Barnes, picks up Billy White Wolf again. Slammed again, White Wolf. Barnes going up at the ropes. Well, White Wolf getting to his feet. Barnes up there, but oh, assisted him by Billy White Wolf, who slams him heavily. Two, three, yes. And Chief Billy White Wolf takes the match. A special treat from black and white into glorious colour into the 70s and into the one and only Teddy Whitten in all his sectorial splendor. Over to you, Teddy. Well, this is the one we've all been waiting for, the match between Mario Milano, who's in the blue corner, and also Bulldog Brown. Now you can see Milano and James J. Dillon is on his way in to the ring, followed by Bulldog Brown carrying with him the Austro-Asian Brass Knuckles title belt. Walking over towards the studio audience is Bulldog Brower walking up the stairs now and James J. Dillon, a very excited James J. Dillon, gets up onto the apron of the ring as we move over now with the brass knuckles title belt that Dillon has in his keeping and introducing to you in the red corner, it is the Austro-Asian brass knuckles title holder, Bulldog Brower, his opponent in the blue corner, a part holder of the Austro-Asian tag team title with Mario Day, it's Mario Milano. And this match should be one of the hardest fought matches ever seen on television because Milano said to Tony Colone, give me a match with the Bulldog because I want to try and stop his momentum. And Mario Milano is one man that has tangled with the heaviest, the roughest, the toughest and the most scientific since he's been setting himself out in this career of World of Championship Wrestling. Now Milano has the Bulldog back in the blue corner. The Bulldog covers himself up with those arms as Milano backs away. Now they come in, referee's hole. On the wrist lock goes Milano. The Bulldog stands his ground. Milano forced back onto the ropes as the Bulldog. This time, there he goes, a big punch is by the Bulldog, forcing Milano down onto his knees. And the Bulldog fights tough, he fights mean. And I can recall King Curtis saying, he's fought him in, bull in, in Bulldog territory here in Australia, in bar brawls, street brawls, dark alleys all over the world. And believe you me, he is a tough character. An animal when he gets inside that ring, if you can call him that. And when you look at his face, when he starts throwing those punches, no wonder they call him the Bulldog. He kicks, he gouges, he punches, and so does Milano. But he punches by the book as he backs away now, Milano, being kicked around that thigh area and around the cartilage area so long, he just grabbed the hold of that left arm. Now look at the face of the Bulldog. 
Oh, and you could hear that from here, right on the bugle that went, and a headbutt by Mario Milano. Side headlock, and a punch to the mouth again by Mario Milano. Works on the wrist, but Bulldog goes downstairs, upstairs with a forearm. This is a match, a beautiful match of real tough courage, courage shown here by both men as Milano hits the canvas again. Bulldog accompanies him down there. The referee goes down. One leg on the ropes by the Bulldog. The crowd screaming. Dylan running around the ring. Again, the referee's on the blind side because the Bulldog had that leg on the bottom strand of ropes and the crowd going wild here. The referee can sense something going on. Three minutes. Three minutes gone and the referee again. He's called for a break and Dylan doesn't like it. Let's get a shot of Dylan, will you? He certainly is upset, James J. Dylan. And look at him hitting that canvas as he disagrees with the umpire, the referees. There I go, umpires. Football season over, ladies and gentlemen. But the referee's decision is Bra Brower now has a chin lock on to Mario Milano. Dylan looking closely now at his uh, man inside the ring as Brower has a chin lock still on to Mario Milano. Milano on his knees trying to get that big bicep and the forearm of Browers away from his chin and of Dylan on the outskirts. Look at that face. He's telling him to pull more. Look at Dylan, will you? Have a look at that screen of Dylan. Shouting instructions from the outside the ring and Brower always looking for his manager to see if he's doing exactly as he requires. Now, Milano trying to find a way out. The referee putting the question here to Milano. He gets away this time. The Bulldog's insane. Look at him. Follows up from behind. Hits into the kidney area. And a headbutt by the Bulldog. Milano with a beautiful forearm. And the Bulldog stood there. He took that and he'll take it again. A kick to the stomach. Headbutt by Milano. And the canvas said hello to Bulldog. Brower. Now he's pleading for mercy. Milano's on fire. The crowd are right behind Milano. Dylan's telling him to go back. Dylan's telling the referee to move him back until he gets off the ropes. <coughs> Dylan moved over as the Brower moved over towards the blue corner. The referee talking to uh, James J. Dylan. Watch closely as the crowd were hurtling abuse at Bulldog Brower. And now Milano in boxing stance. Fist clenched, he's been told to open those fists by the referee. Now Brower goes in and meets up with a wrist lock, Japanese wrist lock on to Mario Milano. The strength here of Bulldog should tell out, but Milano's also a little taller, which makes it a little bit more difficult for the Bulldog to put him down. Five minutes. Jack Little, five minutes gone. And look at the face on Brower. Will you get a shot of that face of Bulldog Brower? He's got his right arm on the rope there, using it for leverage. The referee cannot see the right hand of Browers on that ropes. And the referee will immediately call for a break if he can see him putting that hand on the ropes. And Dylan's telling the referee what he's doing and what he's not doing. Dylan's idea is to distract the referee's attention. You can see for yourself. There's nothing I can do about it. My job is to commentate on the matches. The referee is there. He's the third man in the ring to put himself in the right position. Now the bulldog goes down the canvas, has those leg scissors on the arm there. The arm scissors onto Mario Milano. Pulling back on that wrist of Milano is the bulldog. You can see him dragging it back there. And look at the shot there from our camera boys as we really go in close now, close to the bottom strand of ropes. Look at that chest on Bulldog Brower. Sweating profusely he is. And there's a shot of James J. Dillon walking around the outskirt of the ring, sucking on that big cigar of his. As the referee watches here, Milano has got the shoulders of Bulldog pinned, but the Bulldog bit Milano and comes in and buckles him up. Milano comes back, side headlock, takes him off the ropes. There's a charge by Milano. And Milano came off second best as the Bulldog hammers him with a punch to the side of the face. And Milano, a headbutt by the Bulldog. Milano on his knees now in the red corner. Chin lock by the Bulldog. And look at that filthy face of the Bulldog, will you? Oh boy, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but by gee, when you look at it, it certainly is animalistic. The Bulldog Brower said so it's Bulldog country here in Australia. Ask the bum! Ask the bum! And Dylan said, ask him, ask him. The referee puts the question now to Mario Milano, but it's a negative from Milano. 
Can Milano come out of this? Look at the right arm of Milano. Will you? It's shaking, quivering. Oh, and he's bit the ear of Milano. Brower. Got the ear of Milano. Right between those teeth. And Milano has got to come out of this somehow. And there goes the Bulldog again on that ear of Milano. Milano now tries to come out of this, clenches the fist. The Bulldog said no, but he throws a forearm and another one. And the Bulldog takes him down by pulling on the trunks of Mario Milano. They're at centre ring. And what a match this has been on World Championship Wrestling. Eight minutes, eight minutes. Eight minute mark we've been going now. As Bulldog Brower has Milano on his back, centre ring. One of the toughest and roughest matches I've ever called on World Championship Wrestling. That Bulldog, he doesn't care how he wins. And boy, has he psyched himself up for the big match this coming week with the Austro-Asian heavyweight wrestling champ in Ronnie Miller. And Miller, okay, he knows what it's all about. He can see the tactics used by Dylan also, Brower. He'll be ready. He's taken two on today, defeated them both. And there's no doubt in my mind the Australian champ will be still there when the chips are flying this coming week. And look at that kick. And another foot stomp by the Brower. And another one to Milano, who rolls around the canvas towards the red corner. Arm locked by the Brower. But he's pleading for mercy for Milano. Don't hold it, Milano. Throw it, will you? And he throws it. Good on you, boy. In he goes again. I shouldn't be as biased as what I am. But there's a headbutt from Bulldog Brower. I hate to see Loudmouse get up there and plead for mercy. Look at him. There he goes again. Now Milano pushes the referee away as the Bulldog goes back into the red corner and he said no fist. Dylan jumped up to the apron and coming in from behind now is the Bulldog and the crowd can sense something foul going on here from Brower as he moves in towards Milano. Milano takes him by the head and look at that for a head butt. Boy, it was a ripper. He stands his ground, the Bulldog. He won't go down. And Milano comes back, hits him with a forearm. This time he's down, and Milano goes with him. Body press. How unlucky can you be, Mario? As he lays a fist here, ready to put him down. But he's got one leg over the ropes, the Bulldog, and the referee said break. It's a foot stomp by Milano, and he goes down again. And the Bulldog really in trouble here now as Milano looks to be finishing a lot stronger. Rolls the wrist around. Only time will tell. Bulldog put into the whip by the... Oh, he goes up over the top of the second turnbuckle and pleads here. He's covering up. The Bulldog's covering up. Suplex by Milano. Rolls him over. The count of two by the referee. Milano now. Unlucky on two occasions. Comes in now. He's got a forward chancery here on two. Bulldog Brower, Milano, taller of the two. Bulldog heavier, Milano now. Can he finish? Can he finish on from this position he's in? The time, Jack. Ten minutes. Ten minutes we've been going in this match. And this is an extended time limit match. One fall, 15 minutes. Extended time limit. Now the referee calls for a break because the legs of Bulldog Brower are underneath the bottom strand of ropes. I don't know about you people at home being excited, but I certainly am because the tactics used by Dylan and Brower for so long could come undone here because Milano asked for this match, he's got it, and there he is pleading for mercy again. Have you ever seen anything like it before in your life? It's easy to talk than to get up there and give the action as Milano is proving now that he is as strong as any of them. And look at him go, laying those punches on and a headbutt by Milano. And there goes the groggy Brower back, punching into midair, and that's a buckle up job by Milano, and a high knee lift by Milano. Brower back to his feet, side headlock, and a biff to the beak by Milano. And Brower, this could be the finish of him. Hope you're watching this, Ronnie Miller. This is the action you've got to give him next week. As we see the abdominal stretch now by Milano. The abdominal stretch. Can the Bulldog come out of it? Yes, he has. Oh, boy. 11 and a half minutes. You heard it from Jack Little, 11 and a half minutes. Coming in from behind now is Milano. On to the Bulldog. He takes him now over, rolls him around, hits him to the canvas. Two. Oh, close. That hand was halfway down. I can imagine King Curtis now watching on with Larry O'Day at this fellow because there's going to be some big action this week in World Championship Wrestling. And, of course, King Curtis and Larry O'Day, being the best mates of Ronnie Miller, will be watching anxiously, trying to help Miller pick out the points that will be vulnerable to the big Bulldog Brower. And there's a headbutt by Milano on to Bulldog, who's staggering, staggering. Milano again, headbutt, 
He staggers once more to centre ring. Can Milano finish him? A high knee lift. And this time, he staggers to the canvas. A body press. The count of two. Oh, bad luck to Milano again. Getting on towards the 15-minute mark. Close. Must be time shortly. Headbutt by Milano. And the staggering groggy Bulldog Brower is in the abdominal stretch again. This could be it. Dylan on the outskirts of the ring watches. Hello. Oh, the referee has called. Has pulled Phillips in with him. He's pulled the referee in and allowing Milano to release the abdominal stretch. The referee is out. And from the second strand, the Bulldog flies through the air. A big knee drop to the back of the neck onto Mario Milano. The referee's out. What's going to happen here? What a sensation. Milano watches as the Bulldog climbs to the second strand. Look at Dylan. Here comes Ronnie Miller. Miller comes in. And look at the big champ go. Laying it on to Bulldog Brower. He comes in. Kicks to the head. Oh boy, Tony Colone. What a match you got coming up next week between the Bulldog and Ronnie Miller. And here comes Larry O'Day. O'Day's in there trying to help Mario Milano. Oh boy. This is a sensation today on World Championship Wrestling. And look at Dylan. Dylan's telling the Bulldog to get in there and do battle with the champ now. But you watch Dylan the Bulldog. They'll run for cover. You can bet your bottom dollar they'll run for cover. And the Bulldog now goes over towards the referee. Dylan's inside the ring but jumped out quickly. And this is not over yet. So stay with us because I want to see what's going to happen here as Brower gets up onto the steps. And Dylan comes in from behind and Miller's into him. And here comes the king. Curtis is coming in. And look at Miller, will you? Laying it out here on to Bulldog Brower. King Curtis lending support there to Mario Milano. And there go he goes. There he goes. They're going to the dressing rooms. There they go. Dylan's had enough. And still in the ring is Ronnie Miller, who came to lend support to the referee. I'll ask the referee. Disqualification ref, was it? The referee's decision, a disqualification. The winner of the match, Mario Milano, with a disqualification against Bulldog Brower. One for ten minutes, introducing to you in the red corner, Kid Hardy, his opponent in the blue corner, Larry O'Day. Your referee is Rob Phillips. And the bell to get the match underway. They meet at centre ring with a referee's hold and O'Day forces Kid Hardy back onto the ropes and Phillips the referee. The third man in the ring calls for a clean break and they break cleanly. O'Day comes in, comes from behind with a full Nelson now onto Kid Hardy. And a strong man is this Larry O'Day. You can see a great shot there from our camera boys as we're really in close to them. Kid Hardy goes down and takes Larry O'Day over with an arm drag there and puts him down to canvas. Good move by Kid Hardy because Larry O'Day certainly would be the stronger of the two. watching World Championship Wrestling and uh, those comments I made at the top of the show that uh, Mario Milano beating Bulldog Brower on TV today should be a great match and of course Ronnie Miller doing battle with two men, one who will be Butcher Brannigan. It's not a handicap match. A flip of the coin will determine who will be in first and then a one minute break after that match and Miller continues on and so does Larry O'Day with an arm drag and Kid Hardy comes back, leaves a receipt for that and takes Larry O'Day down, he's got a Japanese wrist lock there onto O'Day. He's got it back to us there on our on my monitor anyway. This time O'Day comes back. Back to centre ring. This time O'Day takes him over with an arm drag again and O'Day comes out with a hammer lock but under the bottom strand of ropes onto the Hardy and the referee once more calls for a clean break. Back again to centre ring, the referee moves in, not having had much to do so far, the referee. Hardy comes out again with a Japanese wrist lock on to Larry O'Day. With the legs outstretched, Hardy, a little uh, smaller in height than O'Day, of course. O'Day takes him down, leg trips him, comes up with a leg lock now on to Kid Hardy. The referee puts the question there to, to Kid Hardy, but... It was a negative from Hardy. 
people in New South Wales this Wednesday on October the 11th at the Wayland Community Centre, Mount Druitt. You'll see all of your stars on World Championship Wrestling. That's the Wayland Community Centre this Wednesday, October the 11th at Mount Druitt. Now, it's still Larry O'Day. A leg lock on to Kid Hardy. He releases it, comes back again. It still locks that leg up. It's a left leg of Kid Hardy. Comes in from behind now. Rob Phillips, the third man in the ring, putting himself in a good position and asking the question to Kid Hardy. And by G, O'Day certainly has got some power on that lock he has on the leg of Kid Hardy. By G, he's pulled that right back. Kid Hardy trying to throw the left arm around the throat of Larry O'Day to force him back onto canvas. Gets the arm close to the forehead, but can't get it down around the throat. This time he gets it down. Will O'Day release the grip on that leg? He has. He comes out of it now, Kid Hardy. That was a test of strength from Kid Hardy there with Larry O'Day. And now he comes back with a chin lock on to Larry O'Day. On the defence one minute, attacking the next is uh, Hardy and O'Day. Not to be outdone, thinking all the time. And comes out again, works back on that leg. And look at the big fella go, will you? And again, the referee hits down to the canvas and puts the question to Kid Hardy. I've said it before and I say it again. You watch these matches and you see a wrestler attack one certain part of the body, works on it to... Uh, to weaken that particular part of the body. Now Day is doing just that on that leg lock he has on to Kid Hardy, but Hardy's taking him over to the ropes and the referee once more interferes and calls for a clean break. Now Day, he breaks clean, Kid Hardy jumps up to his feet. You can see Hardy limping a little bit on that leg now, trying to get the circulation going back into the leg where Larry O'Day has been working on it. Now Day's around, following up his opponent now, making the move. He takes the fingers and O'Day is quite surprised by the move there of Kid Hardy. And O'Day has gone down there now to canvas. The referee hits the canvas with O'Day, checking to see if those shoulders have not been pinned. I mentioned to you about Wayland this coming Wednesday and people in Victoria at the Horsham Town Hall on the 18th of this month and the Ballarat Civic Hall on the 19th. So people in Victoria in the country areas look forward to seeing you at Horsham Town Hall the 18th of October for all your World Championship stars and Civic Hall Ballarat on the 19th of October. But it's O'Day now. Again, under the bottom strand of ropes with his feet, and the referee jumps in and calls for another break. They meet up at centre ring again. O'Day has that determined look on his face, and uh, Kid Hardy watches in surprise as O'Day, it's inside step over toe, all he put onto Kid Hardy then, but he hit canvas with him also. And again, the referee puts the question to Hardy. The right shoulder's not on the canvas. Kid Hardy tries to throw that right arm around the throat of Larry O'Day. O'Day still applying plenty of pressure to that left leg. It's a matter of Kid Hardy being able to put up with pain, and there's a big elbow from Larry O'Day, forcing that arm to come away from his head. And again, you can see that Kid Hardy is suffering quite a bit of pain here from O'Day's strength onto that left leg. The referee raises the right arm. He hasn't tapped the canvas as yet. Goes down, checks it out once. Moves around towards the bottom strand of ropes, and the referee again taps O'Day. Asked him to release the grip because his leg is under the bottom strand of ropes. And one thing you'll notice with O'Day, he will break clean when asked to by the referee. The point is, will Kid Hardy break clean? He backs away. Yes, he has. Both to their feet very quickly. Referee Phillips interferes, jumps in between them and calls from the wrestle on. Centre ring, referee's hold. Half Nelson by Kid Hardy, leg trip to canvas. Kid Hardy comes down with a big forearm to the chest of Larry O'Day and another one. And Kid Hardy applying plenty of pressure. A body press, he's tapped at once. The referee onto Larry O'Day, taken by the hair. Kid Hardy picks up O'Day. Forward body slam at centre ring. The big elbow dropped to the chest by Kid Hardy. Covers him for the body press. The count of two onto O'Day. But he had the strength to force Kid Hardy off. And look at that for a forearm, will you? Boy, that was loaded. And canvas hit the back of Kid Hardy. There goes another one, and down he goes once more, Hardy. And Hardy this time is showing the effects of this hard battle he's had with Larry O'Day. A suplex, a vertical suplex. Down goes Kid Hardy, body press. That's it, a beautiful vertical suplex by Larry O'Day, giving him the win of their first match today on World Championship Wrestling. Enough of the colour, it's making my eyes water. Let's go back to the zoo, back to the animals. It's time for the cage. 7,000 fans at Festival Hall have already seen 55 grueling minutes of the most exciting and the most vicious tag team match I have ever seen with the ring surrounded by steel wire. Mark Lewin and the Golden Greek girls are in, have tried everything in the book to try to put finish to the career of Walda von Erich and the great Tojo. 25 minutes into the match, 
It was Mercerin who was pinned to the count of three, and the bell rang. Eddie Swan raised the German in the Jap's hand, but Mark Lewin called the referee's attention to the fact that Spurs' leg was outside the ring, and the referee ordered the match continue. Then another five minutes went by, and four men in the ring were fighting. Eddie Swan stopped the match. Fine each wrestler $100. They continued fighting, all four of the men in the ring at the same time. And in order to keep control, he had to find them another $100, $100 a man to keep control of the match. And what a job. This is like the gladiators of old. Every one of the wrestlers has spilled his blood, and first one team and then the other has been on top. Mark Lewin has had the sleeper hold, not only on the Japanese, but on the German. The Japanese have had the rack on both Spirocerian and Mark Lewin. The German with that loaded fist has pounded the heads of Lewin and Arian. And now as you see Spirocerian, he's got him one. But on the of the count of one, while the one area illegally interfered, now Lewin comes in, and now they've got him up. Tandem taxi, he's got him pin. There he is down, one. But Waldo Venery kicks him off, and it's all out war in that ring. I have never seen such a thrilling match in all my life, and such a dangerous match within the steel wire of the cage. There's the atomic drop, this could be it. He covered him in, one, two, but no. The Japanese was too tough. Mark kept Waldo Von Erich away, but at the count of two, he tossed Spiros over. And now in comes Mark Lewin to take over where Spiros left off. He's really got the Japanese now in. Champion going to Waldo Von Erich. Coming in, Eddie Swan trying to stop it. Now all four men in the ring again. Spiros lets him have one in the bread basket. Mark's got the sleeper on, but a rabbit place to the back of the neck. Breaks the sleeper. There's another sleeper. Two minutes to go on the mat. And listen to the crowd. They're going wild. There's not a seat taken at Festival Hall tonight. The most thrilling night of action any of them have ever seen. There's another atomic drop. Down goes the jab. Mark Lord had Waldo Von Erich covered. I wouldn't be Eddie Swan for all the rice in China. He has had a tremendous job and done a great job. The sleeper hold on Waldo Von Erich, but a rabbit punch to the back of the neck. Spiros takes the Japanese out of the action. Mark Lone covers Wald one, two, but only the count of two, and knocks into the referee. Spiros throws him into the wire of the cage. Mark Lone goes up to come in on Waldo Von Erich. A beautiful drop kick right to the head. Hit him right on the chin. One, two, but the Japanese kicked him off at the count of two. One minute to go. Oh, I've never seen anything like it in all of my life, in all my career as a commentator. It's a safer hold. Time's running out, and there's a rabbit punch by the Japanese. Spiro Sarian comes in to take over when Mark finished. They're trying to put finish to the German now. Oh, boy, he staggers. He's very close to this corner. Up in the air with the atomic drop over the knee. He's down there. He hasn't got the energy to raise his hand to tag his partner. And Spiros is pouring it on. He said, here's one for you, Tojo. Down he goes. Spiros covers him. One, two, but Walter Von Erich pushes him off. All four men in the referee in the ring at the same time. What a wrestling match. I've never seen anything like it. I've said it before, but I have never had so much excitement in an hour's match. And there it is. Yes, the match is over, but the battle isn't over. There's no question about it. Nothing has yet been settled. Mark is asking for five minutes more. Mark, I'm with you. The fans at Festival of Hall are with you. And so are all the fans at home. 
but it's against the rules of the National Wrestling Alliance. He has for five more minutes. Eddie Swan knows better. He said it's impossible, and now he smacks Big Bad John, but there's no way possible that any time, extra time can be given under the rules. He wants five more minutes, Mark. You can't blame them. They have fought their hearts out for you, the wrestling fans, to try to put finish to the jab in the Germans. What a night at Festival Hall. Wonderful stuff. Now for one of the greats, the bloke who lived up to his name, a big, a bad, a John. And does he give this bloke a tickle or a tickle along? Well, from Greece, coming in at 16 stone, one pound is Condandos and his opponent. From Hassan in the hills of Kentucky, the general himself, the warlord, at 21 stone, six pounds, big, bad John. And I'll tell you that glit glitter coming from his home, it's no halo. John, uh, his helmet, highly chromed. The war jacket's off. He lived John time, or should I give him time? He gives no one else time. He's underway with a match. Into the referee's hold, and it's a heavyweight John who forces Condandos back onto the ropes, and then comes in right across the uh, back the neck with those heavy blows as John rams the shoulder of Condandos into the turnbuckle. Knee lift by Big Bad John. Oh, toe hole, nice toe hole from Condandos and the number 12s of John are turning, pulling on the ligaments in the ankle. Away, big bad John pushing away. Dandos, Dandos coming back. Live wire grabbing at the other angle of John, then coming over the top. It's a two count, but he's too fresh for your Dandos at the moment as Dandos goes down again, low and low, and takes the toe hole. Well, it's tackle after tackle. Dandos over the top again, pushed away and sent out again. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread, and that's the only caution I can give to Dandos. Not saying you're any fool, of course you're not, but just be careful of John because don't be anxious, don't be anxious, just watch and hold your ground. Bridged nicely, big bad John. Dandos going down, but the throat of Dandos taken in the big fingers and uh, hand of big bad John. Oh, Dandos pulls himself right up to try and take the weight and puts a body scissors on Big Bad John, but John has his shoulders pressed down as he holds around the neck area of Dandos. Oh, off the ropes, Dandos, trying those shoulders, but this time John, as you saw, bridged and hipped himself and took it into Cam Dandos, picks him up, oh, and takes him over, slams him down heavily to canvas. It's Big Bad John over the top, it's a three count, and the match with a suplex is Big Bad John defeating Con Dandos. Hand is raised, and there's the winner, Big Bad John. Dandos down and down in a sick and sorry state. You could have injured that man, John. Michael Clay, of yours. one thing that I'd like to do right now. May the good Lord in heaven look down right now onto the lives and the beings of Mark Lewin, Spiros Arion, King Curtis, Angelo Musca, Lord, I want you to look down.
Speak a little wisdom into their heads. Bleed smartness into their brains. And have them leave Australia before we send them to you. I even feel sick having to hold the same microphone as a thing like that. And see words like that coming out of the mouth of Big Bad John. You little beauty, Big Bad, one of the greats. Next, some mayhem, near enough to bloody murder. In fact, it started off slowly too. Mark Lewin against the blob like Abdullah the Butcher. This one between Abdullah the Butcher and from the ghettos of New York, Mark Lewin. Outside the ring, the manager, Big Bad John, with his helmet and his cane, but also representing the People's Army to keep Big Bad John from interfering with that cane, is King Curtis. The king himself, look at Abdullah go down. Lewin comes down, stalking in the middle of the summer. Curtis is outside with the People's Army's weapon, a bat, in case Big Bad John wants to interfere at all with that cane outside the ring. But so far, there's been no interference. It's just been a battle with everything in. There's a sleeper. Mark Lewin's got the sleeper on Abdullah the Butcher. He has a sleeper hold. Big Bad John's getting up on the apron of the ring. But Eddie Swan makes him get down. Curtis way out of sight, out of range of the camera. Has that bad, and he w waved it in the air. And Big Bad John got the message and did not interfere. A beautiful drop kick by Mark Lewin. There's another one. And, but Abdullah the Butcher, oh, he missed that drop kick. I started to say, Abdullah took that punishment to those drop kicks. This has been a real war. There's a headbutt now. Big Bad John is up on the apron of the ring, and he's got his head tied in the rope. And it's two against one. And John lets him have one to the midsection. He's got him now in there. And Mark Lewin is writhing on the canvas. He holds Curtis down the hole. Big bad John. Abdullah the Butcher comes in with the Butcher's Axe. And now he's holding Lewin. And there's the Butcher's Axe coming down on Mark Lewin. But here comes Chief. What do you use? And then he comes. A smash to the side of the head to Big Bad John. He headbutts Abdullah the Butcher. He's going wild. Another headbutt. Another one. He's hammering it in there. Big Bad John comes up, boots him in the back. Curtis and Lewin are on the mat. Eddie Swan looking over at King Curtis. What Big Bad John now has got Wadi Ayub done. And then comes the Butcher's axe on Wadi Ayub. And now Mark Lewin coming back and really pouring it in. King Curtis is wild. Big Bad John taking the full force. Abdullah the Butcher, the full force of Lewis blows. Now it's three against two. And that's what it should be against those two war mongers. The real mongrels. Abdullah the Butcher and Big Bad John. It has to go down in the record books as a disqualification. And Mark Lewin is the winner of this war in the record books. But believe me, the battle isn't over. Mark Lewin, King Curtis, and Wadi Ayub are ready for a lot more fight. Bet the whole cast in the thick of things, just like we loved it. We started with Jack, let's finish with him. We introduced the final bout on our program. Two falls out of three, or until time runs out on our wrestling program. First, ladies and gentlemen, at 16 stone seven, I give you that very popular young Texan, Al Frederick. His opponent, ladies and gentlemen, that rebel rabble rouser from Atlanta, Georgia, who comes in at 17 stone six, the one and only Ray Stevens. the bell ladies and gentlemen this is a two out of three fall match and the time limit is the duration of our telecast today Ray Stevens with a side headlock on Al Fredericks
Fredericks, very strong, has broken that headlock. Almost got a an overhand wrist lock, but uh, Fredericks is then caught by the hair, and now it's back in that headlock. Ray Stevens, very tricky. And Ray, of course, is the former champion, having lost the title to Dominic Benucci and uh, Ray very anxious to win it back. Of course, Dominic is determined to keep that belt. Dominic is a great champion. Stevens continues the punishment on the side headlock. Referee Michael Hunt watches the action closely and the rugged Ray Stevens putting more and more pressure on the headlock. Both men back in the ropes, and on the break, two punches by Stevens. There's the third one. Now it's a front headlock by Ray Stevens. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is World Championship Wrestling. And promoters Jim Barnett and Johnny Doyle, in association with GTV 9 bring you this great new era in wrestling and the finest wrestlers in the world. And this match in the ring right now between Stevens and Fredericks, I assure you, is a main event in any arena in the world today. Two of the top wrestlers, both from the United States. Stevens is from Atlanta, Georgia. Al Fredericks from Port Arthur, Texas. Speaking of Texas, don't forget that Tex McKenzie will be back next week and will appear on this show. A fast exchange on Fredericks winding up with an armbar hold on Ray Stevens. Young Al Fredericks. A former great amateur champion, former Texas State champion, has been wrestling professionally for about two years, and he's really, really doing well. Very handsome wrestler. Fredericks punishing that arm by Bray Stevens. Ray is uh, slowly getting up to his feet, although still caught in the arm lock. And Ray goes to the rope, steps out of the rope, and that, of course, is the automatic break, but Fredericks pulls him back in. Kick to the chest by Ray Stevens. Fredericks getting up. Ray gets him in a front headlock. Al is out of it with an armbar hold. Al twisting that arm. Stevens could be in trouble, but fans, as Zach Little and I have told you many times, Ray Stevens in particular is very dangerous as the match progresses. Many times when he's hurt, he's more dangerous than ever. Fredericks propelled into the ropes, a vicious kick to the midsection. A big flying there by Ray Stevens. He's behind him now, picks him up, drops him with the atomic drop, has him covered. The first ball of the match is over. And the winner, the winner of that ball is Ray Stevens. Well, I see we're ready for the second fall. Uh, Ray Stevens has taken one fall. And uh, Al Fredericks certainly wants to even it up.
I would uh, think that there are about 10 minutes remaining in the match. I'm checking with the timekeeper. There are just 10 minutes to go. Uh, 10 minutes to go in the telecast. That would give us about seven minutes in the match. And if the match should end prior to that time, uh, Johnny Doyle has a standby match ready. Ray Stevens, of course, way ahead now with his one fall, and he hurt Al Fredericks with that atomic drop, but Al is young and strong, but as the match goes on, Stevens seems to be getting tougher. We're looking forward, of course, to seeing Dory Funk on the card soon, Tex McKenzie next week, and wait until you see Mitchell Arakawa. Al Frederick backing Ray up, throws a punch, takes him up. A beautiful drop kick, and Ray went out over the top rope, and he's on the floor. And here's Al Fredericks following him out. He picks him up, and he body slams him right on the cement floor. The crowd going wild. Boy, what a terrific match this is. Fans, this is a great match. It certainly can headline any arena in the world. Al Fredericks determined to bring, to bring a victory in this fall to at least even things up in the remaining minutes of the match. about four minutes to go in the match. Al Fredericks slammed, oh man! He crashed him into those ropes. And Fredericks is shaking up the ex-champion, Ray Stevens. Just checking with our timekeeper, there are four minutes to go in the bout. is becoming more and more eager. And of course, Ray can just post now for the remainder of the bout, as he has one of four. Three minutes to go in the match. Just two minutes and ten seconds to go. Two minutes remaining in the box. And Fredericks was hurt when he went out of the ring. A vicious punch to the face. And now, Ray Stevens punches and rips and tears away 
And now Frederick. He has it by the arm, and he crashes out into the chamber. He's got him covered. One, two, and Stevens gets away. And he gets to the outside. Now there's just one minute to go. One minute remaining in the match. running out and Stevens is doing all he can to prevent Fredericks from gaining a fall. Now he picks him up. He falls back. A two count and once again Stevens getting away. Fredericks has him covered again. There's just 30 seconds left in the match. 30 seconds to go and Ray Stevens throws a punch. He has Fredericks covered. It's a wild and woolly bout. A wild and woolly bout. The match is over. And Ray Stevens is the winner of the match. Ray is the winner. He took one fall. They went through to the time limit. And uh, Frederick was unable to get a fall. Well, Ray, you see that slippery character running from me that whole match? He kept running and running and running. He's a coward. Say, hey, Ray, there's one thing I know all the fans want to talk about, and that is the fact that Dominic Danucci has regained his title from you. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. First of all, there's no athletes in the world that come from Italy. There's no Italian athletes. And this Danucci, he's no exception. He did defeat you, didn't he? Listen, you know what happened. I hurt my knee. I hurt it. I had him unconsciously when I hurt it. And in any other sport or anything, racing or horse races, baseball or cricket, when a man gets hurt, they call a timeout, and a doctor comes in and looks at his leg. Well, I hurt my leg, and you've seen it. They didn't give me no time. Now, tell the truth. Tell them people. Didn't I hurt my leg? That's right. That's right, Ray. That's right. So, not being a sport or a good athlete, it's Italian and Rotten Danucci grabbed my leg and start twisting it. Well, I had no alternative because my leg was numb and I thought it was broke. But not that he done it. I done it myself. And actually, he's just a champion temporarily because the championship doesn't belong in this country. It belongs in the United States where great wrestlers and great athletes and great champions come from, men like myself. That's it, folks. There isn't any more. Well, not until volume five, and that's out right now. It looks like the human tank has finally run out of gas. Oh, oh, brother. That should be it. That's all there is. There isn't any more. And you pick me up. And you hurt my neck, cop. We got a casualty list. That's unreal. This way, when you cut the uh, blood supply to the brain, it's a little harder to get it flowing again. All I can say is, wow! <laughs> <laughs>